My name is Diederik Wolsak. I am the program director for a wonderful organization called Choose Again. And our purpose is to help people, assist people, facilitate people in a process to uncovering who they truly are. This particular retreat, it came about to allow high-functioning individuals a very powerful snapshot of what this work is about. And there are people who come to the center in Costa Rica to choose again. They have all kinds of symptoms. Some of them are depressed, some of them have anxiety, some have physical ailments that they're struggling with, some are, um, have addictions, all kinds of symptoms, eating disorders, you name it. My main addictions were all non-substance. They were all basically addictions to the chemicals that my brain um, generates. I was completely addicted to my belief that I was my money and my bank account. I was incredibly addicted to fear. Was I keeping everybody happy? Was I earning enough to keep my family okay? Uh, you know, so every day I had lots of evidence of that, that life was a scary place. You know, it all started in my childhood of, of feeling separate or other than, and I had uh, speech dyslexia and all this other stuff. And what I found was that uh, the drugs prescribed, you know, they, I was OCD, high anxiety. They didn't really do anything at all. In the end, it just created this dependency where I didn't feel anything, but if I went off them, then it, symptoms would get much worse. I know being undisciplined keeps me in pain. It kept me in pain by being overweight. It kept me in pain by not being able to do, like, study when I needed to study in university. Somebody said at one point, you need to discipline your mind, and I realized that I need to discipline my mind. Otherwise, I am unhappy and I prefer joy. And that's it, I prefer joy, I prefer looking that way. Growing up, my mom suffered from depression and committed suicide six and a half years ago. And so there was obviously a tremendous amount of guilt and anger, fear, all sorts of things around that. You can tell I'm pretty articulate when it comes to actually how I can speak. But I still have a belief that I can't. I still have a belief that I struggle with words. I still have a belief that I don't, you know, I can't get it out. When people first come down to work with us, they think they are their stories. We say to the person, okay, that's your story. And what are the feelings that come up in you? And then as soon as I can identify the feelings, underneath that is the belief that I made up about myself. You know, when I first started out here, I, you know, they laid down these rules and they were very similar to AA or, you know, like rules of, of etiquette. So all these rules pissed me off. The old raising the hand. Oh, and that, that's triggered. Oh, that's old. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I used to get put in closets for not raising my hand. Look at all the feelings that come up when you heard that little agreement about raising hands. What were the feelings that came up? Shame. Shame. Fantastic. What else? Uh, sorrow. Tortured. Tortured. Untrusting. Rejected. Rejecting. Mm -hmm. That's the primary process, is what are you feeling? Who's choosing that feeling? Who's the I that believes this to be true? Is that the I you truly are? And the answer always is, no, it's not. Because if it were, I'd be joyful. Can you feel it right now? Is it familiar? Have you felt it under other circumstances? You're feeling it right now, I can see. Wonderful. So feel it, please keep your eyes closed. Now go back to being little Zoe. You're, being, you're very young and you're feeling this feeling of disappointment. It's very strong. What's happening? Somebody is saying or doing something, there's something happening and you get that feeling. What is it? There's a lot. There's a lot. There's many. I'm seeing many. Okay, okay just years. choose one. Don't let your ego talk your way out of it. Choose one. You already thought of one. Bring that yeah, it's, up. It's, it's, it's probably theater. It's probably acting. Hmm? It, it was probably not getting a role that I thought I should have Not getting a role that you should have gotten in your ego mind. Right. And what did that say about you? I wasn't good enough. Thank you. That's where it goes back to. When you sit in the circle, you get a representation of 
the world. You get a representation of the universe. The swirl of love that goes through this circle creates an environment that there's no fear. But I've had a repeated um, uh, upset that I've had throughout our marriage is the fact when I get up in the morning and she doesn't follow me up. It's an upset to my peace. It starts my day wrong um, and creates a path each day to, with, of, of anger and frustration. The person you think you love will not get up. How does it feel? Angry. Yeah. How old are you being when you get this anger? Young. I literally gave my mother a massage every single day from the, by, about the time I was six till ten every day. Mm -hmm. Just to get her to go make my lunch and to start the day. It was, that is what I had to do every day. Was I had to give her a back rub. So what does it say about you that your mom wouldn't get up for you? That I was not, not worthy of love. Not worthy of, of her attention. And you had to do something in order to get her love. In order to get her attention. Mm -hmm. And it, had to, it became a ritual. And did you ever really get it? Do you ever really get it from Angie? You can make millions and you still don't get it. The story is not important. It's how we react to the story that's important. So that's a true love relationship. It's where we help each other understand that what we're believing about ourselves is not true. Mm -hmm. True love is helping the other heal their beliefs that are not true, that, that are barriers to peace. We've been married for almost 18 years, and I think a majority of that communication between the two of us has been through ego, because we didn't know any better. Yesterday, I felt parts of me that were very shattered. That's a big feeling. Is it familiar? When did you first feel it? Where did it come from? You know, my parents fighting and sensing that feeling from my mom, mm -hmm. like sort of absorbing it. So if you take the shattered apart into components, what is it saying about you? What's the message you get with that feeling of being shattered? That I'm not complete. But you're not complete, right. And that's fantastic because you hear his story. I love this. He's getting up by himself, the message he gets. You're not getting up, the message he gets, I'm not complete. Mm -hmm. Both of you are playing this little game in order to get the reaction each of you is getting together in order to heal it. Now we're, now we're talking marriage. So it's essential that I recognize, yes, I felt this before. Yes, this is a familiar feeling. And what happens, then I can no longer blame you. You did not do this to me. In your presence, I chose to feel it.